I am a staunch supporter of phones that offer exceptional bang for the buck value which is probably why the last few phones I have bought with my own money have all been under $500. US dollar. Google's Pixel A series has continually been in contention for the best cheap phones each year and the Pixel 8 a doesn't deviate from trend. Yes, it gets a minor facelift with the design but where the Pixel 8 a truly impresses me is its robust software package. So far this year phones such as the Nothing Phone 2A, OnePlus 12R and Samsung Galaxy A35 all pose threats to the Pixel 8a so Google needs to set the record straight that the Pixel 8a is the undisputed best G phone champion when all is said and done. This could be the phone that sets the benchmark for all other mid-range phones released this year. In my Google Pixel 8a review, I test out the phone's new Google AI features like some of the ones it inherits from the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro that I have enjoyed using to save me time. On top of that, I am eager to see what improvements the Pixel 8a has with its display, battery life and camera performance to make it a satisfying upgrade over last year's Pixel 7a. Pre-orders for the Pixel 8a went live on May 7, while general availability at the Google Store and other retailers will happen starting on May 14. More important to its story, however, is that its US price remains unchanged at $499, US which is wonderful news given how rumors hinted to the possibility of a price hike. Luckily, that's not the case here, but you should know that the $499 US dollar cost is for the 128GB of storage. If you need more, Google setting an additional 256GB option for $559 US dollar, UK shoppers will pay £499 for the Pixel 8a and £50 more increase from the Pixel 7a. Mid-range phones really get any color options besides the usual black and white options but Google's has the Pixel 8a available for different colors. You have visual obsidian and porcelain for those who prefer something more neutral toned while the bay and alloy options add a bit of charm to the phones. My Pixel 8a test unit is the alloy version which has a deeper green tone over the mint color option for the Pixel 8. Unfortunately, Google has yet to lower the price of last year's Pixel 7a that once is still selling for $499 US dollar on the Google Store but I suspect it won't be long before it gets a price cut. Even so, Pixel 8a deals going on right now make it almost entirely pointless to get the Pixel 7a at this moment mainly because you can get the Pixel 8a for free in some instances. With the Pixel 8a design, I am really impressed by how it looks and feels very much like Google's more expensive flagship phones. For a mid-ranger, it certainly has a charm so it that few phones can match. It's definitely better look than Samsung's comparable Galaxy A35 and makes the aging iPhone SE 2022 even more dated than it is already. There are a couple of design changes that make the Pixel 8a look better than the Pixel 7a. First of all, the corners have been rounded to make it more in line with the design of the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro's design language. Secondly, it also feels much better to hold because of the matte black and polished aluminium frame it's sporting this time. It doesn't feel slippery like the glossy finish of the Pixel 7a while the matte finish makes it much more smudge resistant. I love how the Pixel 8a always looks clean each and every time I take it out of my pocket or after using it for a period of time. Beyond these two changes, pretty much everything else about the Pixel 8a is identical including the horizontal bar on the back of the phone that contains its cameras, USB-C port, power and volume rockers. I was hoping for Google to trim the bezels around the display a bit more, there is still a wider bezel on the bottom edge of the display. 
Google's sustainable pledge continues with the Pixel 8s construction because it uses more recycled aluminium, glass and plastic while still offering an IP67 rating for water and dust resistance. This is all fantastic stuff, especially when the Pixel 8a feels incredibly well built. If my Pixel 8 Pro long term review is any indication, I suspect the Pixel 7a to hold up just as well. Google's not the first nor the last phone maker to claim extreme brightness with its displays and while some claims may seem a bit outrageous. I am happy to report that the Pixel 8a at least delivers a brighter screen compared to the Pixel 7a with its 6.1 inch OLED with a resolution of 24 100 by 1800 pixels. It adopts the same display technology found with the Pixel 8, an actual display that Google claims can reach a peak brightness of 2000 nits. Our lab testing reveals a peak brightness output 1378 nits and 1350 nits with HDR content. The latter very much comes close to Google's own claim of 1400 nits, even though. The Pixel 8a display's peak output is still nowhere close to the 2000 nit rating Google's mentions. It's still much brighter than the Pixel 7a's meager 931 nits of brightness. I watched a bunch of 4K HDR videos outside on a sunny day and could still make them out. Another display improvement pertains to the Pixel 8s dynamic 120Hz display refresh rate are from the Pixel 7s 90Hz refresh rate. There is a noticeable difference whenever I activate smooth display mode which makes the scrolling animation around the interface look much smoother. When smooth display is off, I can tell there is a little bit of jitter when scrolling a web page or the apps panel. When it comes to the stuff I use my phone for, the 6.1 inch actual display gets the job done. The OLED panel offers wide viewing angles that doesn't distort the screen in any way, while its rich and vibrant color palette makes watching trailers like Furiosa such a visual feast to the eyes. There are plenty of flagship caliber phones in our best camera phones guide but only one of them cost less than 500 bucks, the Pixel 7a. That phone earns the title of best camera phone value so it's not all that out of the question for the Pixel 8a to continue the trend. On paper, the Pixel 8a is rocking a dual camera arrangement that consists of a 64 megapixel main camera paired with 13 megapixel ultra wide along with 13 megapixel self camera on the front. These rear cameras are no different from before but technically the front camera has a wider 96.5 degree field of view to better fit more people into the frame for group shots. Now comes the important question how much better is its camera performance. Now you can see some camera samples. It's no surprise that the Pixel 8a gains the same Tensor G3 chip that powers the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro which makes the mid-range phone even more compelling given how it's so close in price to the Pixel 8. 
As I detailed already, the phone feels incredibly snappy navigating around the interface and running a few apps which can also be attributed to its 120Hz refresh rate. As I suspected, the Pixel 8a delivers promising benchmark scores that pull it ahead of its predecessor in Geekbench 6. It puts up single-core and multi-core scores of 1581 and 4093 respectively, which easily surpass the 1018 single-core and 3065 multi-core scores of the Pixel 7a. These scores are what I would expect in a newer phone but it's harder to notice with everyday tasks like the occasional email reply or running any of my favorite social media apps. The Pixel 8a handles them with finesse much like the Pixel 7a before it. Gaming on the Pixel 8a is also a joy even more when its adaptive refresh rates makes everything look so smooth. In Age of Origins, the Pixel 8a maintains a smooth frame rate even when there is a ton of action happening on screen. On some other phones, I usually see a drop in frame rate during battle scenes, but this kept pace with the action, just as good as my Pixel 8 Pro. Against the Pixel 7a, the newer Tensor G3 propels the Pixel 8a to a faster frame rate of 53.7 FPS in 3D Mark's Wild Life Unlimited taste. In contrast, the Pixel 7a reaches 41.1 FPS running the same taste. The only oddity relates to how the Pixel 8a doesn't make any improvement over the Pixel 7a when it comes to rendering video with Adobe Premiere Rush. It clocks in the same time of 56 seconds as the Pixel 7a before it. Indeed, the benchmark scores show that the newest Pixel on the block is no slouch for a mid-range phone. And you know what? That's one of the reasons why I love it. Not only is it able to keep a steady frame rate with all the games I play, but it really says something about experiencing a 120Hz refresh rate on a mid phone. Everything just feels fluid. These improvements come without upping the cost of the phone, which in this day and age is a great thing in my book. This means you are getting even more value out of the Pixel 8a, more so if you intend on holding it for the next 7 years. I am not one to shell out $1000 plus for a phone, which is why this is the phone I would buy with my own money. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.